Hello and welcome back to another video. Thanks for tuning in. And in this video, I've got a returning guest. I've got Mr. Peter Jarman of Peter Jarman & Co Accountants. Peter, how are you? I'm very well, Justin. How are you? Yeah, fine. Thanks very much. Yes. Thanks for coming back on another video. As the last one was so popular, we thought we'd create another one. And this time, talking a bit more about capital gains tax. If you've seen in the news in the last few weeks, there's a lot of talk about capital gains increases. And whilst there have been about three or four proposed uh, potential changes, we're just going to talk about one, which is potentially uh, the most likely one in Peter's opinion. Um, so Peter, could you tell us potentially what might be happen happening to capital gains tax next year and or what changes we might see? Yeah, of course. So what we're really talking about, Justin, here is uh, individuals that own property. That's where the changes are likely to be. So this isn't if you own your property inside your company. This is if you individual owns a property. At the moment, if you make a gain on that property, yeah. you're paying either 18% tax if you're a basic rate taxpayer or 28% capital gains tax on that gain. Now, the Chancellor is talking about that gain changing to perhaps in line with income tax rates, yeah. so perhaps 40% rather than 28%. So it's just something you've got to bear in mind when you're looking at the returns on your your um, ISLA properties. Okay, fine. And will it? Is there anyone in particular it will impact, or is it more a case of anyone that's holding on to a ISLA? Will they be okay because they're holding on to the asset, or is, is it? And is it just come into play when someone's looking to sell one of their, their properties, or potentially sell a flip? Or something? Yeah, when you when you pay a capital gains tax liability, it's only when you sell the property. You can't uh, just because you remortgage the property. That doesn't mean you're going to pay capital gains. It's yeah. just when you actually take that property and sell it to somebody else. Okay. So then, this new potential change is essentially they're just looking to increase the amount of tax and perhaps put it more in line with income tax. That's that right. Way? Yeah. So we, yeah, we're looking at you know income tax rates for. High rate taxpayers are 40%. So you could easily see capital gains tax be at 40% as well. Right. But would you say, given all the news and press around it, obviously a lot of the headlines have said that capital gains tax is going to double. And is, was it a little bit of scaremongering? It's not as bad as it seems, would you say? Um, well, I mean, it, it, to compare for some people, it will double because it may well be that you were paying 18% now yeah. and you suddenly pay 40%. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a big chunk of your profit goal. Um, but I think just the general principle over the last well, 20 years, capital gains tax has always been lower than income tax. Um, and so it has, it has paid um, investors to buy assets, hold on to them, and later sell them and pay that lesser rate of tax rather than perhaps buy a property, develop it, and sell it straight away and trade and pay income taxes. And it looks like that differential is going to disappear when the Chancellor comes around to the next budget. Okay, brilliant, brilliant. Good answers and, and thank you for covering that. There are, as I've mentioned, a few other proposed changes to capital gains tax. Um, we've covered potentially what could be the most likely one, um, but I will put a link to an article below so you can read through, quite, quite easily see what the different changes are. Um, but now we just, I quickly wanted to move on to um, a change to capital gains tax that actually has already come in. It came in in April 2020. That's that right. Yeah. Um, that not everyone is aware of, or perhaps people are aware of, but they're not aware of the turnaround time for this this tax change. Are you able to cover this in a bit more detail? Please? Yeah, of course, Justin. So here what we're talking about is any uh, completion of a property um, that isn't your main residence, so there's a chance that you might have to pay capital gains tax on it. It's any completion after the 5th of April 2020. So if you complete on your property in the year to 5th of April 2021, um, the day that you complete, you've got 30 days from that date to tell HMRC um, how much the gain on that property is and pay the tax. So this is a pretty short window. In the past, what used to happen is you'd make that gain, you'd wait until you did your tax return for the next year, yeah. and then you'd have to pay the tax on the 31st of January the following year. So if, if using the old scheme, if we had a gain today, yeah. it would be on your tax return to the 5th of April 2021, yeah. and you'd pay the tax in January 2022. Right. So you have plenty of time yeah. to deal with it. 
Today, if you make that gain and there's tax to pay, you've got to get registered with HMRC, yep. calculate what the liability is, and in 30 days' time, pay that liability and tell HMRC about it. Okay. So a big, big change that uh, people don't necessarily know about. It only applies to individuals or uh, joint owners selling their property. Yep. And it only applies to residential property. So if you are selling property inside a company or you're selling commercial property, this doesn't apply to you. Okay. But if you're selling residential and there's a gain on it because you've let it out, yep. then this rule applies. Um, and there are penalties if you don't submit it on time. Brilliant. Okay, so yeah, so particularly for those of you that own buy to let properties or portfolios in your own name as opposed to in a limited company. And the, the important thing to remember there is because there's a much quicker turnaround time for that capital gains tax, it's probably worthwhile you getting the information together in the lead up to that, not waiting to the last minute. It's for you and your accountant to potentially uh, prepare in advance as you've got a small turnaround, a turnaround window. Yeah, a lot of our clients are actually having all this standard information with us at all times. So they're yeah. telling us what the cost was, what the date they bought it for, yeah. um, what improvements they've done to the property since that time, whether there's been a cost of a lease extension, all those sorts of things. So we've got yeah. all the standing data and all we're waiting for is what was it sold for, what were the legal costs in selling it, and we can calculate the capital gain. Brilliant. Brilliant. Okay. Thank you for touching on that, Peter. Hopefully this is a, a useful video for anyone looking to get more information on capital gains tax. Any questions? please drop them in the comments below and uh, I will put the contact details for Peter below as well. It's peterjarman.com. It's peter at peterjarman.com. So yeah. Yeah. And what's the number? It's 01273 441187. Um, the other thing I should mention, Justin, yes. is for anyone wanting to do uh, this declaration to HMRC themselves, yeah. we have got a little YouTube uh, video explaining exactly how to, to register with HMRC yeah. and how to put in the claim. So, yes, so um, I didn't mean to. Brilliant, thank you for watching. Cheers.